Hello and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures on thermal processes in the lithosphere. In the second of the video lectures on this topic, we're going to look at some examples of time-dependent heat transfer. And that's our only goal in this lecture. Um, we'll essentially look at two examples where time dependence is an important consideration for heat transfer. So as I mentioned in the previous video lecture, rather than looking in detail at the solutions to the time-dependent heat transfer equation, we're simply going to look at some um, examples where time dependence is important. And the two cases we're going to look at are the characteristic time of uh, heat diffusion, and then we'll look at the thermal evolution of an intrusion which was again something that was mentioned in the previous lecture as an example of time-dependent heat transfer. So the characteristic time scale of diffusion is something that can be done for heat transfer or really any kind of diffusive um, process, but the essential idea here is it's a way of estimating how much time is needed for some kind of diffusion process to be close to its new equilibrium state. So, for example, if an intrusion is in place somewhere in the crust, a dike or a sill is in place and you know about how big it is, you might want to estimate how long it takes for something like that to cool down. And you could then do that using this characteristic time scale calculation. The equation is relatively simple. We essentially are saying that the characteristic time is proportional to the dimensions of whatever the body is, so length squared. If it was a dike or a sill, it would be how wide or how thick the, um, the igneous intrusion is, divided by the thermal diffusivity kappa, which you saw in the previous video lecture. Now, rather than saying it's proportional, we can be a little bit more specific and say that the characteristic time is simply equal to the length squared divided by two times kappa. And what it's going to provide us with is an estimate of when a diffusion process is about 85% of the way to its new thermal equilibrium. And so what's shown down here in the table are examples for different dimensions, different lengths, um, how large the characteristic time would be. So you can see, for instance, for a 10 meter um, dike or sill, you might expect it to be most of the way to its thermal equilibrium in just over one and a half years, whereas if you have a 10 kilometer pluton or something like that, it uh, can take one and a half million years to cool down. So much longer time scales involved for a bigger igneous intrusion. So now you have an opportunity to um, just test out your understanding, get a sense of how this characteristic time equation works. And the first case we'll look at is a pluton that's estimated to have cooled over 750,000 years. So this is a case where we know the characteristic time, where we know approximately the characteristic time. And the question for you is, what is the approximate diameter of this pluton if we assume that cooling was the result of heat conduction? So I'll pause the video here or give you the opportunity to pause the video here and come back when you have a solution. Okay, so what did you come up with for the size of this pluton? Hopefully you've done something like this. We have our equation for the characteristic time that's shown here, and you can simply rearrange that equation to solve for the length scale. In this case, it's simply going to be two times kappa times the characteristic time, which we have, and then you take the square root of that to find the length scale. And if you plug in the numbers, you'll hopefully come up with something like 6.88 kilometers. And if you go back to the table earlier in the lecture, you should see that falls right in the approximate place where you would expect it to be in that table. All right, so now let's take a look at an example of the thermal evolution of a 1D intrusion. And if you're wondering what a 1D intrusion is, in this case, we're considering something like a dike that um, has a defined thickness and it's infinite in length. So it would be like a planar 
dike of, in this case, two kilometers thickness. And so we're going to assume that the surrounding rock is all at a constant temperature of 200 degrees. The dike is in place with a temperature of 700 degrees, and you can see the width of it here. So in this plot, we have width along the horizontal axis and the vertical axis is showing temperature, where you can see the country rock is 200 degrees, and this intrusion is going to be in place at 700 degrees. So temperature difference of 500 degrees in this case. What we're going to look at is how the temperature of this intrusion in the surrounding rock changes over time. And so that is what is shown here. And each of the different colored lines corresponds to a different time from 10 years, that's shown in black, to 1 million years, that's shown in gray. And so what you can see is that this intrusion is going to slowly cool. And, um, you know, we're making a bit of a simplification. We're going to ignore the heat release during solidification. It is in place, of course, um, as a fluid that is going to crystallize, but uh, we'll ignore that for now. But you can see a few interesting things here that are really characteristics of any kind of diffusive process. The first is, initially we have a very steep gradient in temperature along the edges of this intrusion. In fact, it basically is a stepwise function where it goes from 200 degrees up to 700 degrees and then steps back down on the other side of the intrusion. Now, diffusive processes will tend to basically smooth out sharp gradients. And so you can see, you know, after about 100 years, there's not a whole lot of change here, but by 1,000 years, you can start to see the corners of this temperature difference that are being rounded out. And you can see the same thing in the blue line down here. By the time you go to 10,000 years, you start to see a nice smooth um, version of that original temperature difference and obviously, as you go to 100,000 or a million years, things get smoother and smoother. And so even after a million years, temperatures are elevated in the center of this intrusion, but obviously much closer to the temperature of the surrounding rock. Now we can apply the idea of this um, characteristic time in this case too. We have a two kilometer wide intrusion, so we can simply plug in two kilometers here and put in a typical value for kappa and you find a characteristic time scale of about 125,000 years. And if we were to say that the characteristic time scale's temperature should be about 85% of the way to its new equilibrium temperature, our prediction would be that we'd be somewhere like 700 degrees minus 0.85 times delta T. Delta T, of course, is the difference in temperature, which was 500 degrees. And that puts us at about 275 degrees here that's shown in the orange dashed line. Now, what you can see is if you look at the line in purple for 100,000 years and the gray line in uh, for a million years, that we're not really that close to the 100,000 year case. And again, this is one of the ways that we're going to estimate the time for this intrusion to cool down. The other thing is that in our estimate, we're assuming a temperature difference of 500 degrees when in reality, the rock surrounding the intrusion will warm up. So perhaps our temperature difference should actually be a bit smaller, which would put our estimated temperature um, at the characteristic time slightly higher and perhaps closer to the purple line here. Anyway, that's it for our examples of time-dependent heat transfer processes, and now it's time for you to take your quiz, and I'll see you for the next lecture where we're going to start talking about advection.